Ben Gunther, James Quirk, who's going to be doing on uh, Zoom, and Dan Schneider, who will be here shortly, will be presenting. So the topic is a bit of a kind of a collaboration of different topics. We call it here career development, opportunities and challenges for achievement and satisfaction. There's basically so much thrown in, yeah, whatever. <laughs> What I'm going to be talking about today for the next 10 minutes for term faculty, so it's both those on the lecture track and those on the uh, research track, it probably has more of an appeal for those on the lecture track. What does good look like? Right? Uh, what I wanted to do to start was to have a poll of you know, how many people in the audience are in the first three years of term faculty, how many in four to six, seven to 10, or greater than 10. I've been here for 14 years. This is a thought that I've had for ever. So when I put together this panel, um, I did it for at least two reasons. About 11 years ago, I went to Ann Farron, and I was a term faculty. Back then, term faculty really weren't too engaged, at least within our department, if not the college, and a lot of affairs in the, college, in, in the university. And I went to a term faculty session, and they seemed to really speak my language. It really got me. And I said, oh, wow. And you know, so finally, somebody's talking that I can understand what I'm going through. So that really hit me. I wanted to get back. Um, secondly, I've been in the term, term faculty senate, uh, and there's a lot of issues regarding maybe satisfaction uh, with long term faculty. But we also talked about, hey, we should emphasize some of the good, some of the things that we're accomplishing, some of the things that we feel good about. So with that in mind, I wanted to you know, go through this. And my presentation has two aspects to it. What does good look like? And what are some ideas to how to achieve? And I'm not here to tell you what good looks like. I'm here to ask the question. That's really what I'm, what I'm looking to do. So I'm going to address research, teaching, and service. What does good look like? There's six slides, basically. One is on each item. What does good look like? Again, I'm asking the, these are questions, not answers. I provide if I, you know, somebody has the answers for me, please tell me. Uh, and then some ideas I have about what, how I think about what I can do to achieve here. Uh, it says here, the purpose of this discussion is not to talk about contracts, promotion, equity. We've got a lot going on there to try to improve in those areas for term faculty. So um, notice I have a runner up there. If you're out doing a race or whatever your favorite activity is, for me, yeah, it's running or biking, I know what good looks like. Further and faster, right? Um, and further and faster than whom? For usually it's myself. I'm really interested in how I'm doing relative to myself. A lot of times I can't keep up with others, so it's a good thing. You know? I'm going to be kind of always disappointed. So it's not just relative to other people. Um, and, you know, can't you just go out there and just enjoy, look around? No, I need to have something to compete against. I guess I may be highly competitive, probably not, not unlike you all, right? So what are we trying to accomplish? So how does in research, particularly as term faculty, perhaps those in the lecture track, what does good look like? What does successful look like? I remember, again, 11 years ago, having this conversation, just kind of an offhanded comment, um, a senior person in term faculty said, I like to try to publish one piece a year. It always stuck with me. I want to have one piece I'm working on all the time. Um, but as we know, quality versus quantity, Right? How do I measure quality, impact factors? Who's even looking? I mean, all I've ever seen is, well, currency in the field. That's kind of binary, either current or not. Um, so it's, it's a bit of an internal struggle that I've had. And I know in the sciences, it could be grants. Um, again, I can only think a lot, I, I generally thinking about my discipline and my area, you know, success may be different in your areas, whether it's book chapters, whether it's other kinds of things. But as term faculty, particularly on the lecture track, that aren't given all of incentives per se, of course, a lot of these are internal, and we want to build our equity to, um, you know, to, to engage in research in a certain way, what does good look like? And again, I said, I'm here to ask the question, not to answer it. Right? I'm going to present a few ideas I have for uh, how to engage in some of these areas. Um, so. And, you know, I think in oftentimes measurement's hard in the job. How do you measure success? Your sales, okay, you know, I sold a lot, or I sold a lot of profitable items. Harder in other jobs. Things I try to do, I'm going to be very conscious of time, make sure my other 
Um, I've learned recently in gauge TAs, uh, they can be valuable resource. Probably the biggest thing I love about working on my TA and research, they're so excited. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, it just makes me excited. Um, sometimes I struggle a little bit either the lack of, of global picture, of course that's why they're a graduate student, they <laughs> haven't been around for a long that time, and of course once you're, they're done the, the semester, they're gone. But suddenly I'm stuck with these things and gee, where did they go? Um, present your work at conferences. Uh, the problem is if I only have one piece going on, then I go to one conference. So, you know, but still, I think that's important. You know, some of the others are more like the feel good, find what, what interests you, uh, and appears to be hot in the field. I, I do like that last one because at least, hey, you know, you get a lot of hit, tips for that. Um, I struggle sometimes. Be a reviewer for journals and publications. I've been doing that a lot, and I'm asked to do that a lot, and I'm always late, and I'm always, oh, God, I gotta get that done. And to what end? Again, I'm asking the questions I don't know the answers to. I'm hoping in some of our sessions and other sessions, and my emails at the end, we can address some of these things further. A um, couple things for me, remain confident that conducting research is core to what I do as a professor. I should be doing that. It doesn't matter whether uh, I'm being measured or, or it's core to my success. It's what it is that I do. It's what it's core, core to my being. So uh, those are some thoughts regarding research, again, very time constrained, so that's why it's just such sort of a blast out. What does good look like in teaching? <clears throat> Here, I think it's even harder, and yet, of course, we are, as term faculty, that is perhaps our primary role here. So what does it look like? Um, you know, I, I wrote this down here, teaching is like being in an orchestra. Those in the audience may not notice that you missed a note, but you don't. You know it, you didn't explain something well. Um, I mean, again, these are just things that resonate with me. Um, you know, you want to, again, internal success. I want to, like an orchestra, I want to make this thing sing. It's just so good, even though I know they're bored. And they, uh, I, I'm happy with what I did there sometimes. So um, it's internal. Um, I, I don't have a lot of other thoughts of how to, you know, even what good looks like. Yes, we have sets. And as I like, I put this in here, oh, I hate them, except when I get a good set score. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, uh, tackling a new course or modifying a course. A lot of satisfaction I have with that, but as my next slide will say, be careful of the one and done. Oh, does that make you not feel so good? You, you work on a course for four months because somebody has the chunk your faculty is on sabbatical. You feel great. You just put all this in there. Maybe you redid their exams and you never teach it again. And they don't know you ever taught it. Ah, that's a struggle. Yet I feel like I'll probably do it again, I think. I'm not sure. Um, Teaching as an idea, um, make yourself indispensable or available to teach a variety of courses. Um, you know, you do want to be somebody that they can't you know, be without. Um, so, and when you do take a course, you never know when that suddenly becomes your area, your expertise. You know, the person that was sort of teaching that leaves and suddenly you're the person. You know, it's kind of almost you laugh at it and say, God, I didn't have no idea what I was doing. Now suddenly I'm the expert in that area. Um, uh, other things, let's see here, um, is that the teaching engagement may vary widely by faculty members. Some like to teach introductory classes. I like to teach the higher level classes, try to do anything I can to get into those higher level classes if possible. Not always possible. Um, and then, of course, try to have some other teaching techniques. And I, you know, one of my favorites was conducting an in-class auction. Still need to work on that because it's still, besides the teddy bears, I auction out. I'm not quite sure it works, but still it's fun. Um, Last, because I'm really tired on time, but I have two minutes. Um, what we have, by the way, is four presenters. We'll spend about two minutes for questions, because I want to make sure everybody has time, and then a few minutes afterwards. So I only have two more minutes. Service. What does service look like? And I think I had an iteration of this. Do you even want to do service or be successful in service? Um, so I, I think... When I think about, do I want to be involved in service and what kind of service, and particularly, so again, I'm in my 14th year, it doesn't matter if it was 12 or 16, you know, some larger number than three, I think I want to try to think, how can I be in a leadership role? In the department, in the community, try to make a difference, um, yeah, uh, try to be an invaluable member. Uh, it's a great way to meet people, it's a great way to sort of be involved, get to know things. Um, so, where are some opportunities there? Committee assignments, 
Um, I got asked to be a program director about seven years ago, eight years ago, and they've never asked me to stop. So I guess I'm maybe doing something right. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of tedious work, but boy, I should have got my hands and things. I've even gotten myself, you know, courses filled that wouldn't have been filled if I wasn't there saying, hey guys, why don't you take this course that I have been teaching, you know? So it's got some advantages. Serving on dissertation committees, I don't know, I've been doing that more and more. Seems so pretty good. I'm not sure where that fits in in the whole paradigm of things. We don't even know if it's service or what it is. But uh, university service, so done these kind of things. You notice I have other because I'm not sure what those others are. I'm still looking. Um, so I think I'm gonna stop there. For yeah. The Two minutes of questions. Oh, good. Oh, thanks for the reminder. I totally forgot. I forgot. It, I said I was stopping. I'm keep going. It's difficult to know what to spend your time on. Right? It's difficult to know I'm supposed to be mainly a teaching role, and yet the thing that may interest me the most is research, and that's where my equity seems to be, but is it? Like, it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, I don't have the answers. I'm just raising the questions. Um, but how do I become fully engaged? I put here, you know, trying to, trying to answer the session. Job satisfaction will come in part from being successful and also being valued. It's tough to control the second part, but you can influence the first. So with that, I'll stop for a second. Any questions? Anybody want to? Yes, Jordan? Uh, yes, we have from the chat. Okay. Uh, we have from Laura, who is asking you to explain the in-class option. I've never heard of this as an in-class activity, and I'm curious to learn more. Sure, and, and, and I don't have enough time, so we can actually, you know, tell her I'll, I'll love to chat with her further, but... Um, okay. In my, we actually have a session in um, graduate level and intermediate microeconomics on auction theory. And you know, you think you know, if the subject matter might be boring, you try just describing it to a group of undergraduates, they are just completely running out the door for it. But all of a sudden, you, you auction off a teddy bear and you just say, hey, you know, who's going to bid 60, 70? Of course, I have a little few more rules around it. And suddenly, they loved it. Wow. So can I make it more? And I found some material on it. We can we can talk about it later. But you know, different kinds of auctions and what's the goal of the auctioneer? Are the those auctioning versus the auctioneer? Yeah, yeah. What next question? Yeah, uh, somebody, the, somebody here. Yeah. Hi, my name is Daniel Ginsberg. I use they them. I'm an adjunct faculty yes. in world languages and cultures. Yes. I wanted to ask about some of the things, especially when you talk about engagement in. Uh, conferences and within your discipline more broadly, uh, reviewing for journals, how do you feel like, do, do you, since your metaphor is competitive, do you feel that you're competing against tenure line faculty who are better resourced to do those things? I know you said you weren't going to talk about those aspects, but I feel like no, there's no getting question. away from it. It's a great question. Uh, in publishing, mainly, uh, is, is it, you know, and, and trying to see where I, my journal stacks up versus others in my Department, but even just like travel funding. Well, travel funding, I, I get a certain amount, as I guess you all do, and I, I don't. But, uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's just not not discretionary. It's get a certain amount, and you know, I either use it or I, gee, I should have used it. Um, but yeah, in terms of public, do I look? I, I kind of look at the running metaphors. Probably a pretty good example. I go out and run with a group of people, and I can't keep up, but I'm okay with it. It's kind of the way I am with the tenure, you know, faculty and research too, maybe. I don't know if I've answered your question or not. But. I mean, I guess what I'm thinking about is um, if the playing field looks the same, but the inequities are systemic, if they are better supported materially, yes. but then you go out and try to play the same game, right? does it put you at a disadvantage? And yes. how do you compensate? <laughs> Sometimes you got to deal with the playing field you have, but there's a longer conversation, and um, I'd love you to be involved with that. But not, not, not here, for, for, okay. at least for my presentation. Okay, and I'm sorry if I'm not answering it directly. Any other questions or we'll get to the next presenter? Okay, yeah, uh, who's the? Jim. Jim, okay, let's get Jim up here.
Hi, are you putting up my slides or am I putting them up? Okay, terrific. Uh, thanks very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. And then I'll just I'll just ask when uh, it's for somebody to move my slides in a minute. So thank you very much, uh, Ralph, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here. Um, uh, could you move the advance the slide, please? I want to start by just saying that one of the things I find helpful whenever we're doing this is we focus very often on the granular. I have a meeting at three o'clock and class at four o'clock and another meeting at five o'clock. And sometimes I find it helpful just to step all the way back and say, what are the big picture things that we're doing? And so I just offer that as, as something you might find. I find helpful. Somebody gave me that advice and um, uh, maybe you'll find that up for yourself. Uh, next slide, please. Hi, uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Um, just by way of introduction, I came to American University as an adjunct for a little while, and then later as a term faculty member. And what I'd like to talk about today, a little bit of overlap with Ralph, is that there are a lot of different opportunities for us to pursue that kind of personal satisfaction and productivity kind of along the same line. Sometimes they seem like maybe they're pulling us in different directions, but lots of times they can be moving in the same direction. And I just want to offer maybe some ideas on uh, the things that I found useful and maybe some of the things that you'll find useful. Kind of next slide, please. Can I have the next slide, please? Great, thanks so much. So these are just a couple of ideas. You might have different ideas. These are the ones that, uh, some guidance that I have found helpful over the years. Uh, we begin with, I think for most of us, for all of us, our primary love and our primary task is a commitment to the teaching. That's why we're here. That's our primary responsibility. And the opportunity to say, hey, I really want to do a good job today. I want to do a better job tomorrow, next week, next semester. Uh, the university and other resources offer lots of ways uh, to, for us always to, to become a little bit better teacher. Uh, there are Obviously, the Ann Farron Conference is an amazing way. And you know, I met Ann Farron. I did, it was at a conference many years ago. It was terrific. She was so nice. Um, so CTRL does so many good things. Uh, there are also things like AU Core does lots of things about how we can work on our teaching. There are faculty learning communities. Um, each of our professions, each of our fields has its own kind of education section in our associations. So there's lots of different ways for us always to be like, hey, how can I be a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better? So our commitment to the teaching is the first thing. Um, one of the second things is just finding out, for me, is just finding out what students are interested in. Maybe this is in class or after class or in office hours, just talking to students about what they're interested in. And, and these kinds of things have led me to activities like being a faculty advisor for a student publication, a uh, faculty advisor for a student advocacy organization. And sometimes it's just short-term things. A student might say, hey, we need some help at our Model UN conference this weekend, or hey, we think you'd be a good panelist for an event we're having. Uh, just little ways, just keeping in touch with the students about the things they're interested in um, can lead to some pretty, uh, pretty good opportunities. 
And then it works the other way as well. We're trying to nurture creativity in our students. Yes, all the things in the syllabus, but maybe you'd be a really good mentor um, for a research assistant, or maybe you'd be a really good mentor uh, for a teaching assistant. So trying to find out which students might be really good at this, which students might be a good fit for you. Uh, and then more broadly, uh, especially in town, there are so many good things. You might say, hey, you might be interested in this, this event that's going on downtown, or you might be interested in knowing this organization does these kinds of things. So this kind of both directions, being interested in what the students are interested in, and then kind of nurturing curiosity in students. For being engaged with our field, which can mean many, many different things, uh, like the research that Ralph talked about or other kinds of activities, uh, sometimes we don't have a particular research paper to present for a journal maybe or for a conference, but conferences are always looking for session chairs and discussants, and these are good ways to get out and meet colleagues from other places and find out what people are doing and talking about and researching. Uh, this is just one avenue. Uh, I think it was about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, I started bringing professionals into the classroom via Skype. Um, there's a politician in New York on the campaign trail, and they might uh, just Skype in for 20 minutes. Or I knew a couple of professors in Russia, and they would Skype in from Russia uh, and Serbia and just give their presentations. And um, uh, we had the author of a textbook Skype in and say, hey, you know, I wrote your textbook and here are the kinds of things I was thinking about that motivated me. And so while all these things are useful for the students, they're also useful for us, to, to these kinds of things. And then the last piece I would mention are ways to be involved on campus. Um, as Ralph mentioned, there are lots of programs and committees and activities all over campus where you could bring your particular skills, your interests, and, and maybe help out that group a little bit. If you don't know where those are, ask some colleagues, ask your chair. There's lots of, I asked my chair one time, I said, hey, I'm really interested in this kind of thing. And the chair said, well, that's kind of full, but we really need somebody to help over here. And I said, that was great. And so it was a good way to kind of meet some new people uh, and to figure out you know, some of the ways in which the university is working and also to, to make a contribution. Um, hey, let me help out a little bit. You know, We're all beneficiaries of what's going on and, and we wanna be of service in various ways. So just to sum up, I would say, obviously the teaching is always important. That's, that's at the center of what we're doing, um, but kind of understanding what students are interested in and, and nurturing curiosity in them, even on things outside the syllabus uh, and then staying engaged in our professional interests, our professional fields, and um, and becoming engaged in the university has been really, uh, I've been really grateful for all the opportunities I've had to do that. So I'll just leave that there for the moment. Uh, I, I don't know, if, do we have question time first or later? Who goes next? Ralph, how are you? I don't hear anyone. Hi again. Jim, oh. Jim, can you hear us? You can nod. Okay, try again. Hey, Jim, can you hear me? 
He, he can't hear. He, he, he is not. Said okay. We can hear us. Spend, for, for just one minute, maybe speak for a second on how you invite uh, experts into your class. Uh, I've done that infrequently. It's always felt like an, uh, a tall ask to get, and, but they always came in person. Um, but just people that you met in your past somewhere. Um, you know, maybe speak for a moment on how you, how you accomplished that. Sure. Is there an echo now? Or are we okay? It's fine. Okay. 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 Uh, there are at least two ways. Um, I apologize for the echo. Uh, sometimes it's people I know. Uh, sometimes it's people I've met in travels or conferences or people I've known from graduate school or whatever. Um, and other times I do just call uh, cold call people. So, for example, we were doing a unit on local politics in one of our classes. And I just called the county council member, my county council member. I said, you know, I'm in your I'm in your district and I teach at American University. And I wonder if you'd have 15 minutes to zoom into class one day. So sometimes it's people I know well or have known for a long time. And other times I do just cold call people. And sometimes they say yes and no. And, and that's great. Can I add to that? Can they hear? Uh, here, let me give you the microphone. Okay. So, Bridget Ronda, Dean of Undergrad Education. Um, one of the, the things that works really well, too, is if you know the person and you have the contact, but you ask the students to invite them. Because there are so many times that somebody will, they just, they, they love it when there's a student. I've had multiple times that a Nobel Prize winner has zoomed into a class because the students have done that invitation. Is clapping. <laughs> Asking somebody to zoom in is such is such a lower app. It's such an it's it is so much easier, and you're and you can also make a request for a much shorter period of time. Like you said, you know, like I never ask somebody to come to campus to just speak for fifteen minutes, but asking somebody to zoom in for fifteen minutes again, it's an easy ask. And uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And it's just there's such a bigger population of people you can invite, right? So if you worked with somebody in Bosnia or California or whatever, or even downtown, instead of it taking the whole morning, it just takes a few minutes out of their day. Just the population of people you can invite is so great. I think this is a great question. I'm just going to add one more idea. I'm Coco Benitez. I teach strategies and stress management. Nice to see everybody. I have made this absolutely a staple in my class. I have a professional panel every semester. It is probably what my students look forward to the most. And what I do at the within the first two classes, I actually have my students write down, what is your dream list? If I can invite anybody in here to be on our professional panel, who would it be? And I, you know, I get gymnasts and sports and all that stuff, but I say, think about your profession, what you want to learn, write that down. And then I get really broad, you know, academic field. And then I go to my LinkedIn, I go through my contact list, and I reach out to people that I know that I know will say yes and will show up in person. I don't zoom anyone in. This is in person. They move around. They have small groups. They literally leave the class and go for a walk and have one-on-one -on -one time with them. So it is very profound. It's a game changer. It is a staple in my classroom. So if you've never tried a professional panel, it is wonderful. You got to go for it. I love that. And I would add one more thing. I would say the students, uh, I think, are most interested to hear from my guests who are young alumni who've taken this class in the last two, five years. And I bring the, I bring in these young alumni either in person or on Zoom. And they say, hey, you know, we didn't really have a full appreciation for it then, or we thought we did, but then we use these tools when we're out in the workplace, uh, use them all the time. And so really, and that just, they can see them, the students can see themselves as young professionals. And I think that really gives them a little boost of confidence and a little like, hey, I can do this kind of thing in addition to whatever practical skills, um, you know, the young alums are, are passing along. My presentation? Yeah.
Yeah, let me just stop sharing that way we don't have that issue with the different yep. ones. Yeah. Then we need to change the volume again. No, no more. No, it's fine. The way it is, yeah. Yeah, here, right, and maximize. Yeah, let's share first. Sure. Sure, it's there. We're sharing screen. If you move this, mm -hmm. then, then you can do slideshow from beginning. Mm -hmm. And it should work. Yeah. Oh, that is, uh, yeah, that's fine. Good. Let me see if this works. Okay, so click or that's not work. Okay, so my name is Ben Gantor, and uh, this presentation is a little bit different from the who you had so far. It's focusing specifically on teaching, and it focuses also a lot on my personal experience. And it's not because I'm the greatest term faculty, but just to give you a specific have a specific uh, example of how it worked for me. So uh, it does not move. It does not move. <laughs> it worked now, no? Okay. okay. Can you minimize this? Oh, that's fine, actually. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Trying to see. Yeah. I have to stay here, actually, unfortunately. It's not showing here. So I think it's okay. Well, it works. Okay. It works if we click on our. I can stand over here. We can all read. So, one key objective of this session it says learn from experienced term faculty. And the first question I want to basically address is. Am I really an experienced term faculty? So I want to give you just a little bit background on that. I started as to teach as a term faculty in January 2013, so it's about 11 years. But three years before, from 2009 to 2012, I was teaching as an AU at AU as an adjunct associate professor. And now it falls again on me. <laughs> okay, good. So only after teaching my first course in spring 2019, 2009, did I realize how much I love to teach. And that is still the only reason why I'm teaching at AU uh, in addition to other reasons, but I'm only teaching because I love to teach. I'm not teaching because of the money or any other purpose. Uh, before that, I was working as a startup researcher in various international organizations. You're not going through that. I'm also the president of the Bangladesh Development Research Center, which is a research center I created and founded in 2007. And I also got my PhD at American University, and that's why I wanted to teach at AU initially, because I had connection. Uh, the relevance here is exactly that I know AU for a long time. I know the professors because in the economics department, because they were my professors and now they are my colleagues. And currently, I'm also the chair of uh, term faculty committee of the College of Arts and Science term faculty committee, and I learned a lot from being the chair. I was a kind of naive about all the issues related to term faculty, and when I became engaged, I learned a lot. Uh, however, today we are not focusing on the challenges and on the discrepancies and all the issues. So if you wanted to hear what the problems are, you have to attend some different seminar. Today we focus more on the opportunities. So another key objective of this session description, it says, learn how to advance your career here at AU. So again, did I really advance my career at AU? Well, here it is. I went from being a PhD student from 1993 to 1998 to being an adjunct faculty in between. I did other things you already saw, uh, and then being a term faculty in starting since January 2013. But in terms of a title, yeah, I'm still an assistant professor. In fact, I am since I have started as a term faculty in 2013. So actually, I'm unlikely to be ever promoted to assistant associate professor because the qualifications, the criteria for me to get promoted from assistant professor as term faculty to associate professor are the same criteria as getting general, which implies that I need to have top 
These are publications in the top economic journals, even though I have a lot of publications. I don't have necessarily publications in the top economic journals, theoretical journals, and that's why I, I never get promoted, but I really don't care too much about that. Nevertheless, I consider myself to have advanced my career, not in terms of title, but in terms of career, in terms of what I do, in terms of what, what I'm happy about with my teaching. Yeah, When I started to teach, so I had excellent teaching evaluations right after my first semester, uh, but I have learned much more about teaching, and I like it. Second, I have developed the last at least six courses which I can teach readily. Okay, You may say, oh, well, we always invest in teaching and updating, sure. That's the case, but if you have already a set of courses and you teach those courses more or less repeatedly, that gives you then more time to do other stuff related to teaching. It has it gives you time to update the semester course, it gives you time to introduce new teaching methods and so on and so forth. And third, I just got approved for continuing employment in fall 2023. So I'm one of those first two cohorts, even though I have no doubt that many of you will follow soon. So another objective, it asks showcase specific paths that term faculty can use to advance their careers. And my specific path, which as I already said, I want to focus on teaching is the following. Teaching is incredibly important for term faculty. I think you all know that. Why? Well, because in your teach, in your evaluation, whatever you want to be evaluated about, or typical term faculty were hired in a teaching position in the teaching assignment, teaching appointment, 80% of your evaluation is from teaching and then 20% is from service. Research does not count unless you want specifically say I want it in or so on and so forth. And the first course I taught as an adjunct uh, associate professor was Econ 100, the standard introductory course, macroeconomics, and given that I had outstanding teaching evaluations, uh, I was offered to teach another class in the subsequent semester. And that is called Econ 110 for Global Maturity. And it's indeed, you say, what is that? Yeah, it's an introductory development class about the global maturity, but it's not a clearly defined like economic class. So there is a problem with that class. And the problem is that it's an untypical course and typically faculty don't want to teach that class. Yeah, and the professor who had taught it until then he left uh, university and they needed somebody and nobody really wanted to teach it. And I said, well, then you did very well in macroeconomics. Why don't you teach econ 110? Yeah, term faculty, yeah, explore, explore. So that was, you could say, a problem, but actually that problem turned out to be an advantage. Why? Because the uh, chair of my department said, you can design this course however you want. Since it's not a typical course, I don't have to follow a specific textbook. I can teach it as I want. And I redesigned the course entirely and students loved it. Yeah, I redesigned it, students loved it. Many students told me again, semester after semester, that they say, it is the best course, which is taught at American University. Not necessarily how I taught it, but the course itself is a great, a great course. So what is the lesson to learn? potentially, which may apply to you as well. Many times term faculty are assigned to teach unpopular courses. Courses which nobody else wants to teach, well, their term faculty, they can teach it. They have lower, you know, whatever. Continuing on the teaching, and most of it is teaching, in 2010, I then created the journal, Global Majority e -Journal, that publishes the twice a year of the four to five best research papers which students need to write for this course. And the option for students to get their research paper published, it made the course even more popular. And yeah, I typically have a waiting list of 10, 15 students, and it made it even more popular. Furthermore, it improves the quality of a research paper, not necessarily of every student, but for students who have an ambition to get their research paper published, well, they put extra effort in it. Uh, each research paper, of course, goes through extensive editing before it's published. Uh, the journal raises a profile of American University. Yeah, people outside, it's a completely published, open, open source. Uh, they can see what students <laughs> do as, as an undergraduate uh, student, typically, uh, before it was, generally it was Econ 110, it's still basically a freshman class. Yeah, and it helps for others to see what, and other students as well, 
we say, oh, what chance do research economists, what, what options do students have to, uh, to do research? And last but not the least, it raises my profile at AU as well. So the lesson here to learn is try to be innovative in providing students with options to learn. Just don't say, oh, there's a midterm and there's an exam. Try to be innovative to the degree you can. And uh, the second lesson here is try to connect with students beyond the classroom. Yeah, classroom teaching is, of course, important, but try to go beyond that if you have a chance. Um, how did I become a full time faculty? That may be also interesting to some degree. In fall 2012, the department needed somebody to teach. They realized they didn't have anybody to teach Econ 6. 42, a uh, graduate level class, public economics, and I already was booked out. As an adjunct professor, you can only teach three courses in a calendar year, so I couldn't teach with public economics. I was already assigned to teach job maturity, but the department chair said, if you invest in teaching public economics, we will hire you for one year as full-time term faculty. And of course, I jumped on that, yeah, I don't, I don't have it. So I, I became a term faculty in 2013 because of that class. And uh, around 2015, the econ department then developed an online master's program. Again, that is an opportunity to jump on because this will be courses which are taught again and again. If you develop the course for the online program, you also have priority to teach it. So it makes you relevant in the department for the program the lessons here is try to get involved in AU's longer term teaching schedule and make yourself unique, difficult to be replaced. That helps you with your strategy and with your promotion. In 2018, okay, I will have one more slide and then I skip the rest. In 2018, I developed Econ 110 for Global Maturity to become an ethical reasoning course in the new AU course, AU core. And since there was for a long time, a shortage of ethical reasoning courses, this course became a standard course. And it was sometimes taught not only as one session, but two sessions, but sometimes three sessions. So in one semester, I taught three times the same class. You may say, yeah, maybe boring, yeah, maybe it's boring, but it eases up time for other tasks to invest in research, to invest in services. And so on and so forth. Yeah, so this I don't have really time to go through. The lessons are again the same. Try to get involved in AU's longer term teaching schedule. Make yourself unique. Make yourself difficult to replace. And this I mostly skipped because we don't have the time anymore. Uh, research also I have done a lot of research. I say not in the very top journal. Uh, I have all that my CV on my faculty website. You can check out. Let me just focus. On the last slide, the key conclusions. And again, this is based on my specific path, which you may just say, okay, well, it's his special situation. Uh, there are a lot of other sources, even chat GPT, uh, this PowerPoint will be posted later on. There is a slide at the end if, if this criteria, what chat GPT actually says what you should do. So I'm not focusing on that, okay? I'm not even showing it. Uh, as term faculty, you should really focus on teaching, yeah? At least initially. Uh, many times, term faculty are assigned to teach classes which are not very popular, <laughs> but try to make the best out of it. Yeah? Be innovative in providing students with options to learn better. Uh, connect with students beyond the classroom. That was already mentioned before, but it applies certainly also in my case. And get involved in AU's longer-term teaching schedule. If you know well, there's a new AU core, there are classes, and so on and so forth. That's what it is. Make yourself unique, difficult to be replaced. Thank you. And uh, I think we don't have too much time for questions. We've got to go on. Yeah, thank you. Thank Good. you. Thanks, Ronnie. Can you want to come up here, Dan? Yeah. Only because you got five minutes. <laughs> uh, oh, you're just going to talk? Yeah. Oh, gonna, that, that's fine. I'm just going to talk. I thought, we had, I thought we had one here for you. No? No? no. Oh, okay. No? No, no. Okay. I, I hope ahead. you don't mind. I'm just going to talk. So we'll save some time. We won't need Sean to come up here and 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 uh, troubleshoot. Uh, my name is Dan Schneider. I have uh, been a term faculty uh, since 2008. So believe it or not, I've been here now 16 years. So I've tried to think about my experience here and try to generalize it as well. So hopefully um, this can be a benefit to all of you. Um, because we're term faculty, we are here to teach, whether you, you like it or not. 
uh, about a research, a few remarks on research uh, in a few minutes. We're here to teach. Um, we're largely evaluated. At least 80% of our evaluation is based on our teaching. So there is one benefit in being a term faculty member. Many of us, particularly older ones like me, we have a prior a career prior to teaching. We've been in the so-called real world, although uh, a lot of academics don't like that phrase, the real world. But we have experience uh, working for NGOs, for government, even in the private sector, and students, particularly at SIS and probably at SPA and other places, really want to hear about how the real world works. Okay, it is important to teach theory and concepts. Right. Absolutely. But what we bring to the table, our value added over tenure and tenure line faculty is often we have prior experience in the so-called real world where we can discuss, hey, let's take this idea of realism or whatever you want to call it. How, if you're in the State Department, how does that play out? Do they think along those terms or do I constructivism? The answer there is no. They don't think about it. <laughs> I think if you're an ambassador or a diplomat or in the national security uh, agency uh, 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 council, you don't really uh, apply constructive. It's I'm not saying it's not worth teaching. But the point is, how do you merge theory and practice? And based on the experience many of us have had, we can talk about how it really works, how the sausage is made or not made. And students generally respond very positively to that. Um, also, since many of us have had prior careers, and you should not shy away or uh, hide that from students, um, they'll come to you for advice, career advice or internships. And also because we have, many of us have this prior experience, we have a, lo a large, uh, what used to be called, some of you are too young to know what a Rolodex is, but uh, a contact list, I guess, is what it is today. And I've spent a lot of time just going through that, talking to a student who tells me what she might be interested in. And I'll go, ahead and I'll go down and say, oh, here's someone to contact. And I'm happy, if I like her work, to say, let me make an, intro an email introduction. Okay. I urge everyone to meet your students, actually make it a requirement. I want to meet each of you within the first three weeks of the class, not so much to talk about the course, but to talk about you, what you're interested in, what you might, where you might see your career going. And even if it's not instrumental, it makes teaching more personal. And that's what it should be, right? We should get a lot of joy out of teaching. And one way is to realize we're not teaching a number or a large classroom of people, but individuals, all right? So I love meeting students. Um, in terms of what courses to teach, yeah, there are problems here because sometimes we're asked to teach courses. We're not really uh, qualified. Qualified is a strong word. Not our preference to teach. Develop your own courses, but also look beyond your school, your unit. Think about complex problems, for instance, where you can be think much more broadly. So take a subject, something like truth. Put together a course on truth, beauty and truth, whatever it might be. If you look at the titles of complex courses, they're all over the place and fascinating. So take something you're passionate about, also something where you would want to join students, you know, hopefully you're a few steps ahead of them in terms of learning more about something and develop something. It's a great way to teach uh, a course. I, so I teach a complex problems course. Originally, I was going to teach it for two years and I'm now, I think I've taught it five times. I change it each time, each year, um, but it's one of my favorite courses to teach. Um, great thing about research, would I have one minute? Please wrap up, that's probably 30 yeah. seconds. Um, yeah, we're not supposed to do research. I've applied for grants here, I got a grant. Uh, it's much easier to work with the university now than it was in 2011 when I got it. I want to receive my grant because it was a mess here with all these different offices involved. If you're going to get a research grant, be sure to put in your budget a course buyout. All right, because then you'll teach two a semester instead of three. 
giving you time to do real research and also put in summer research. So you're getting paid over the summer. Okay. Um, I hope there was some value in, in, in my uh, in these remarks. Um, it's been a long day. So if we have time for questions, I'll take questions. Or are we, are we going to a general discussion now? I think we're at time. Oh, well, time is nearly up. I should take a few questions, I guess. Where, how are we on? Are, 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 are we up? Uh, Yeah, and if, if I guess if if anything hits you that is of interest, both um on Zoom or in the audience, feel free to email any of us. Um, of course, I put my email at the end of my presentation, which isn't up there, but you've got their names. Um, yeah, we'll post the PowerPoint. Um, again, I started the whole thing. I said, you know, eleven years ago, a session like this spoke to me. I hope maybe a little of this speaks to you all, and hopefully we can do something like this every year at Ann Farron because it's a great way for all of us. We're forty percent thereabouts of the university, so we all have certain kind of interests that we should be talking about. All right, thanks. Let me get us out of.